I'm a collector of musical moments, musical notes. And I feel the way music is really perceived is through little magic points in music. And I know that there are many that have influenced me and that live inside of my imagination, my consciousness, and probably my subconsciousness. And there are several I'd like to share right now. There is one note that was recorded, I think, in 1917 by a young woman who moved from Greece to New York City. And her name was Marika Papagika. She recorded a song called Smer Nieko Minore. And if you want to hear a note of music that is blood curdling and it, it's unbelievable, this note, you should listen to the very first note that she sings in that song. There's this beautiful introduction and then she finds this pitch for me, it's, it's the essence of sadness. It's almost an attempt to find a release from sadness. Um, I've sent this song to friends of mine who have lost partners, who have lost loved ones. Um, it's, it's a song that I love very much and recently we had a version made for Kronos because I had to try to play that first note. You see, when, when I hear something that challenges me spiritually, that would be a reason for me to want to play that music. And for me, Marika Papagika's first note in Smyrna Eco Minore is this incredible challenge. And I, I am certain I will spend the rest of my life trying to find what she found so eloquently in 1917. And there are other notes in music that there's one note I've even had a dream about. In fact, I've dreamt many times about this note. And it was played by Fritz Kreisler. And it's the very first note of this little song by Dvorak called Humoresque. And when you listen to this sound, For me, it, what he accomplished is he defined, in one note, he defined a certain gentleness that I think is really at the heart of what the violin brings to the universe and why people try to play a violin, why I try to play a violin, is to try to make a sound something like what Fritz Kreisler did on the first note of Humoresque. And there are other notes. Um, recently we performed with Alim Kasimov, the great Azeri singer. And there were certain of his notes that were, it, it's almost, I told him after the concert that it felt to me like he was lifting heaven further up. It 
was unbelievable what he accomplished. Unbelievable. And that, those kinds of notes will be challenges for me as long as I live. Um, I can think of many others. There's the great Inuit throat singer Tanya Tagak and her earthy tones that she makes with throat singing is just, th those notes are unbelievable. <laughs> I remember telling her once that I loved the way she made notes and uh, she kind of smiled and, and she said, what's a note? And after that, I, I thought to myself, you know, I'm not really sure I know what a note is either. That's a good question. What is a note? And I, I've been thinking about it ever since. And I think a note is something that lodges itself inside of our being, inside of our consciousness. We work with notes. We try to work with notes. And we try to make a note that might have as much of our knowledge as we possibly can put together. This knowledge could be about innocence. It could be about happiness. It could be about the saddest possible things that have ever happened in our lives or that we've heard about it might have happened in another person's life. And every time I draw a bow, I'm trying to make a note that somehow is more aligned to what I know about the world and what I continue to learn about the world. I remember the very last thing that my wonderful teacher, Vita Reynolds, said to me on my very last lesson, we didn't know it was going to be the last lesson. She was my teacher for 30 years, and the last thing she ever said to me was, the great thing about music is that it always can be better. <laughs>